Good morning, or depending when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and I was always told I had a voice radio, so today I've got some more tournament games for you. But this is... It's a very special weekend, ladies and gentlemen. This was the weekend when the new Pokemon trading card game set Breakpoint was legal for the very first time. So I got myself down to Mad for Miniatures in St. Austell in the most beautiful part of the UK, that being Cornwall. And I recorded a whole bunch of games from a city championship. The format here is X and Y to Breakpoint. It is standard format, but Breakpoint is now legal. We are playing best of three we are playing 50 minutes, and I've made sure to get some decks in here that are using cards from the new set so we can see how good they are and we can start making an assessment of how much of an impact they're going to make. Huge thank you to Vinnie Gardner and all at Mad for Miniatures for allowing me to record and making it very simple. So sit back, grab yourselves a nice beverage, and enjoy this game from the first weekend when Breakpoint was legal. 50 minutes, best of three, X and Y to Breakpoint. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so we have Daniel on the left. He is going to be playing Phantom, and we have got Sheldon on the right. He is going to be playing Lucario Bats. Now, we're going to be talking more about these decks as we go through. Oh, it's a turn one Wally. Now, this is absolutely crucial because Wally allows you to evolve a basic Pokemon into a stage one on the very first turn of the game. Well, it, involves, it allows you to evolve anything into anything else, to be honest. But here we're talking about a basic into a stage one. Why is that important? Because Daniel is playing fan, uh, Trevenant and he's going first. And the X and Y Trevenant, into which he is evolving the Phantom, has an ability which blocks your opponent playing trainers while he's active. What that means is this. Sheldon is going into his first turn unable to play trainers. Now... Arguably, Daniel should not have put that DCE down. We all have seen before. They can be getting rid of. And we've seen that those Lucario decks tend to play a couple of um, Enhanced Hammer. But, of course, that's not happening here because there are none. And we see that Sheldon benches a Zubat and passes. Now, he could have attached a strong energy, arguably no real point, because... There's only a Hulucha down, and Hulucha cannot attack a non-EX. It can only attack an EX. We see he's got an Ultra Ball in hand that he could potentially use to grab a Lucario to start putting on some pressure, or to grab a Shaman, but no, to draw cards, but no, nothing doing. Now, there goes a Wobbuffet, and we've got a Sycamore here. Oh, we got a pair of Wobbuffets. There's an Absol in Daniel's deck as well, which is interesting. Now we see a Burst Balloon. That is another new card from Breakpoint. And Burst Balloon is an item card whereby you attach it to your Pokemon. It gets discarded at the end of your turn. But, oh, and still no second energy for Daniel there. It gets discarded at the end of your turn, but if your opponent attacks the Pokemon that has Burst Balloon attached to it, they take six damage counters. So the whole point of Daniel's deck here is he's saying, look, I'm trainer locking you, and I'm going to go ahead and attack with Trevenant. And I don't really care, to be honest, because, you know, I've got 110 HP and actually fighting resistance, which is moderately useful in this matchup, although do remember that Lucario EX's first attack actually ignores resistance. And even if you do get something going to try and attack me, I don't really care, because I've got a Trevenant, and I've got a Burst Balloon, so even if you do attack me, you're taking six damage counters. And that's pretty gosh darn nice. Now we do see a Battle Compressor from Dan. I'm going to call him Dan. Um, sorry, Dan, if you would rather be called Daniel. But it's just much easier to call you Dan. And I do apologise for that. Maybe I'll call Sheldon Shell just to make it a, a bit even. And we see a Super Rod here getting a couple things back. What Dan really wants to do is get that Trevenant Break out. Because Trevenant Break has a really nice attack. Remember the Break Pokemon. It's an extra stage. Now it actually puts Trevenant's HP from 110 to 160. Which is a not insubstantial increase. But also... It allows you to, oh, and he's got a level ball there, but he can't play it, and he just has to pass again. But it also adds either an ability or an attack. In the case of Trevenant Break, it adds an attack, which essentially, well, not essentially, it, it, for two energy, it puts 30 damage on each of your opponent's Pokemon. But, of course, we can expect Dan to be playing Dimension Valley in this deck, 
And as it's a psychic and a colorless, that brings down the cost of the attack to a single psychic energy, which is a pretty gosh darn efficient attack. Um, I know you're trying to show your cars to the camera there, Sheldon, and I really do appreciate the effort. Unfortunately, you actually just held up your hand away from the lens, so we were entirely unable to see what's in your hand. But we know it's a whole bunch of trainers and nothing else. So we see a birch there and unfortunately hits a tails. So he only gets to grab six, uh, sorry, four cards rather than seven. We also see a second, is that a second super rod? Which is interesting, but of course, it's not the end of the world because, you know, the reason he's playing a pair of super rod is he needs those trevenants. And I've done this before in decks. There is nothing worse. And I, I played this in my right you bats deck, in that, except... Go and actually look. I've done the I've done the profile for my Raichu Bats deck on this channel. You'll see I play a Super Rod and I play a Sacred Ash. And the reason is, if you have to discard, say, two Raichu and a Sacred Ash of a Sycamore turn one, that's pretty brutal. Now, we finally see a Psychic-style energy from Daniel. And that means that he can use Trevenant Breaks Attack or he can use Trevenant's Attack Tree Slam. And right now, he will be wanting to use Tree Slam. 60 to the active, 20 to the bench. The reason is, actually, it doesn't really make much of a difference, to be honest with you. Uh, it doesn't make much of a difference at all. But it does mean that he can do 60 to the whole loot, just so it will be KO'd next turn, rather than 30, so that it won't be. So it's either 60 to the active, 20 to the bench, or 30 to each. I mean, really, it means three turns kills both of them, but it means he kills the Horlucha a turn early, so I think I'd go Tree Slam right now. I think that's a better plan. And then next turn, he can use Trevenant's Breaks Attack. Yeah, and there we go. To do to KO the Horlucha and do 30 to the, uh, to the Golbat, which would be quite nice. So, Dan is in a commanding position here. And this really is what makes these Trevenant decks either really, really good... Or redonkulous. Oh, oh, oh! And that, of course, is the other reason to do Tree Slam. By putting 60 on the Holucha and 20 to the benched uh, Golbat, it means he can then play Lysander to grab the Golbat active, do 60 to the Golbat, 20 to the Holucha, both go up to 80, both have 70 HP, and they both get KO'd. So a fun little end game play there from Dan. So. The way it's actually worked out here, Sheldon is actually the second seed, if I remember correctly. He finished, I want to say, 3-1-1, one, one, or it might have been 3-0-2. Oh, I believe Sheldon is the second seed here, and Dan's actually the seventh seed, although he did finish, I think it was 3-1-1 one, one again, so lots of, lots of people being bunched up here. But... One of the weird things about Top Cut is that it doesn't really matter in which position you cut. The only thing that really matters is making top cut because once you get into top cut, it really it's a completely moot point who you end up playing. You could end up in first position and play a really bad match up in top cut or you could cut in eighth position and play a really good match in top cut. So either way, it's absolutely fine ladies and gentlemen. Just getting there is all good. There is an argument, of course, that with... Because we had 21 people at this tournament, which is the lowest cutoff in order to actually have a top eight. Uh, 20 gives you a top four. 21 gives you a top eight. Now, when eight out of 21 people are making top cut, it's a little bit NBA. By that, I mean in the NBA, you've got 30 teams. 16 of them make the playoffs every year. It's not quite as special as opposed to the NFL, where you've got 32 teams and 12 make the playoffs, and it is an awful lot more special. Well, it's kind of like that here. We're in an NBA-style scenario. You've got 12, 8 out of uh, 21 people making cut and 13 not. But, as I've said, once you get into top cut, it's anybody's game. Now, it is annoying if you make the top four and then get knocked out in top eight because you did well enough in Swiss to make top four, but then you don't actually make top four. So as I was saying, one of the really bad things about these Trevenant decks, if you're playing, oh, straighten it, straighten it, straighten it, you've just knocked the camera. Come on, Dan, straighten it, straighten it, straighten it, straighten it. Yes, good work, boys. I approve. It's not perfectly straight, 
but it's good enough. They've got a viewfinder there, so they can actually look and, and actually make it really straight. But I think that'll be good enough for us to see. So... If you're playing against these Trevenant decks, one of the horrible things is, if they go first and hit a turn one Wally, then they actually get to have Trainer Lock on turn one from the very, very beginning of the game. And we saw Sheldon never got a turn to play Trainers that game. And that's just brutal. Absolutely brutal. Now, what is going to be an advantage for... Sh oh, and actually he's mulliganed twice here. And every mulligan gives Dan one more card, which means that Dan has got one more opportunity, one more, you know, a, a slightly higher chance of hitting that turn one Trevenant. The bonus for Sheldon here is that he is going first. So we can guarantee that Sheldon will have a turn of trainers. And after two mulligans... We do see a base at there. Now, we really want a Lucario. Lucario would... Oh, and he doesn't have it. Oh, that is not a good opening hand. At, it doesn't look like he's got a supporter or an Ultra Ball or anything there. And he really wants to have a Lucario. Why? Because Lucario can go through those attacks. Lucario can do a whole bunch of damage. He can do, you know, 50 for one strong energy. So we've got an energy on the Zubat, but we don't have... Oh, and he's just passing. Now, the other thing is that Wobbuffet does block abilities when it's in the active. So, oh, and we do have a turn one Trevenant if he wants it. We've got an Ultra Ball. We've got a Wally. I don't know. No, we currently have no way to get that Wobbuffet out of the active. But actually, that Wobbuffet is almost doing as much fun stuff as the Trevenant. Because while the Trevenant's in the active, he's blocking trainers. But while the Wobbuffet is in the active, he's blocking abilities. That means Lucario, you know, is going to be much more difficult to find because Sheldon isn't going to be able to use the Shaman to draw extra cards. Now, I am talking a little bit flippantly because remember that Wobbuffet only blocks the abilities of non-psychic Pokemon. So were Sheldon to have a Golbat in hand, and we can see he has a Golbat in hand, that means that he can then evolve the Zubat into the Golbat and use the ability of Golbat to drop two damage counters because we know that he... You know, that Wobbuffet does not block the abilities from Psychic-type Pokemon. Now, we also see that Sheldon has an Enhanced Hammer in hand. So this turn, Dan very much does not want to play a DCE, unless I suppose it's the only card in hand, the only energy in hand, for fear of it getting discarded. However, we all know that if he then next turn breaks... Ah, he's got a DCE and a Psychic, so he wants to play the Psychic here. And he wants to go Wally. Play the Psychic, play the Wally. Next turn, you can play the AZ to pick up the Wobbuffet, attach the DCE, and get rolling. Ooh. Oh, I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that play at all. Because um, now, if Sheldon's got a Lysander and a Lucario, he can actually bring up that Phantom and kill it. And yes, I know it's quite a lot, but either way. Now, he does actually... Oh, come on, boys. There's weakness. Wobbuffet is weak to Psychic, so Golbat swoop across will do 10 damage to each, but 20 to the active Wobbuffet due to the um, whole business of weakness. Now, I don't know why Daniel wouldn't have wallied last turn. I mean, the play here really seems to be, and I know he had the Trevenant in hand, but you wally and Psychic Energy last turn... You DCE this turn, use the AZ to pick up the Wobbuffet, and then you've got the Trevenant attacking this turn. And I don't know if he plays Muscle Band, but if he do, he's got if he does, he's got the win this turn. So not a huge fan of the way Dan played this, I think. Because here's the thing, Sheldon is now going to play an Enhanced Hammer on that DCE, if I remember correctly. Now, we are going to see 10 damage from the Wobbuffet. It does 10 damage plus 10 for each damage counter already on the Wobbuffet. And here comes the Enhanced Hammer. And the Enhanced Hammer could not have been played if Daniel had used AZ to pick up the Wobbuffet last turn after going ahead and using AZ to pick up the Wobbuffet. So actually, had Dan been able to... Had Dan done as I'd suggested... And got the Wally onto the Trevenant turn one. AZ Wobbuffet turn two. This is turn three. He would win the game this turn. 
he would have his Trevenant in the active, he'd be able to hit, last turn he would have hit for 60 damage, this turn he'd be hitting for another 60 damage, and he would win the game right now. So, I know it seems silly, and I know he's in a fantastically commanding position, but he could be winning the game this turn, and he's not winning the game this turn. He is giving Sheldon one more turn. Maybe he's going to draw into something. Now he's got a level ball. Now it's not going to do much. But, oh look, now he's got the fighting stadium. Now Daniel's going to need another energy to be attacking with Wobbuffet. Although if Daniel does attack with Wobbuffet, it will do 10. Plus 30 for each energy attached to uh, each damage counter already on the goal bat, which is 30. Which adds up to 40, which I should remind you, ladies and gentlemen, will KO the goal bat. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, that goal bat is going down. And we play a level ball and we grab a Zubat. I say we, it's not us, it's Sheldon. You're on your own, sir. I say you're on your own. I'd like to think there are people out there going, Boo, Trevenant, go Sheldon, watching this video, actively cheering for Sheldon. If you are watching this and you are cheering for Sheldon, let's get a hashtag Go Sheldon in the comments. Just drop a little hashtag Go Sheldon. I would appreciate that. That would amuse me. I would appreciate it. So he gets the damage, the energy on the Zubat, and he chooses to hit the Trevenant on the bench for 10 damage with the Zubat, which of course he has to do, because if he uses Swoop Across with Golbat, the Golbat dies. So Sheldon, bless him, he is... That sounded terribly patronising, didn't it? He is having a go here. He is trying very hard. He is doing everything that he can. But it, he's just not drawing into what he needs. And this is the unfortunate thing for Sheldon here. Even when he wasn't trainer-locked, he wasn't hitting supporters. He wasn't hitting the... Um, excuse me, he, he wasn't able to hit any Ultra Balls to get Lucario or to get Shaman. And now, <laughs> now there's a Shaman. Could have attached an energy to draw an extra card. Oh, now that's worked out, ladies and gentlemen. That has paid off very nicely indeed. He gets the Crobat, which allows him to hit the Trevenant for 30. He gets the Lucario. Now he's going to be doing 50 damage. Remember, Lucario's first attack goes through resistance, unlike what I suggested in a previous video. Fighting Stadium will not add 20 damage because, of course, Fighting Stadium only allows fighting style Pokemon, fighting type Pokemon, I should say, to do an extra 20 damage to EX Pokemon. So that fighting stadium isn't really doing anything for Sheldon, but what it was doing was stopping Dan being able to use Trevenant's attack for one less energy. Although he's already got the DCE on Trevenant, so it's somewhat of a moot point. Here's the annoying thing. No, we're going to be okay. I'm just trying to work out the maths here, or math if you're American. If Sheldon's got an energy, which we both know Sheldon's got an energy, then, oh, Eco Arm. That allows you to grab tools, shuffle them back into your deck, and he's grabbed a couple of Burst Balloon. So that is potentially going to be very awkward because, oh, and we see, is that an Ace Trainer? Not entirely sure what support is being played here. Um, oh, it's a judge. It's a judge. Because we couldn't see what finger was playing. It's a judge. Each player shuffles their hand in and draws four cards. So Trevenant here is just doing 30 damage to every... No, he's not. He's doing, well, actually 160 damage to the Lucario. 120 damage, sorry, 60 times 2 because of weakness, while doing 30, 20 to the Shaman, 20 to the Zubat. That means Wobbuffet is going to KO the Lucario next turn. However, Sheldon can get the KO on the, on the Trevenant here. The second attack will do 60 damage, but of course Trevenant has a minus 20 resistance. But, of course, strong energy will do 20 more damage. Oh, I thought Sheldon had another energy in hand. He doesn't, but he does get to draw three cards here. Or oh, did he have the energy at the back? 
No, he doesn't. Oh, that's terrible. He's only doing 50 damage with Lucario, and he can't get it with the active. That's huge, ladies and gentlemen. Had he been able to do 60 damage, he would have got the KO here. And yeah, the Wobbuffet then would have KO'd the Lucario. But then, Crobat would have been able to kill the Wobbuffet. He is weak to Psychic, don't forget. Although it would have needed a muscle band on Sheldon's part or a goal bat, which he probably would have been able to get with something like a level ball. And then Sheldon would have won the game. But without another energy, this is huge. Now, we all know Dan could have won the game by now. I've laid that out for you. But he didn't win the game, so that's a moot point. If Sheldon had a second energy here, he'd be able to KO the Trevenant with Lucario. Wobbuffet then KOs the Trevenant back. But if Dan doesn't get a basic next turn, Sheldon just needs a muscle band or a goal bat to get the KO with Lucario. And that's game. But he doesn't have that. So he isn't able to get the KO on the Trevenant. He's going to put the Trevenant up to 150. Trevenant's got 160 HP. And that means that this is... I don't see Sheldon coming back from this. Because now, Dan is going to get the KO on the Lucario. And he's going to be able to keep spreading damage around. This is so big. Um, now, is he doing 20 to 2 bench Pokemon? He should be. He should be doing 20 damage to two bench Pokemon right about now. Why did he... Because he got the KO on the um, on the Lucario, but it should do 20 to each of two bench Pokemon. Now, it looks like we got 20 on three. So where is that? Has he done the bench that? It looks like there's only 60 damage in total on the bench, and there should be at least 80. That's... Bad, ladies and gentlemen. Trevenant's attack does 60 damage to the active 20 to 2 bench. Now, I could have missed something, but he's done that attack twice. So, as a bare minimum, minimum, there should be 4 times 20 on the bench. And there's only 3 times 20. So, yeah. That's a miscalculation of damage there. That seems to be an ongoing theme, but like I say, ladies and gentlemen, you're in top eight here. It is quite a... And we see a Sycamore, VS Seeker for a Sycamore coming from Dan. We are in top eight here. It is stressful. And then you put them on stream and there's even more stress. So cut them a little bit of slack, ladies and gentlemen. So we now have that Trevenant up to 150, which means Sheldon can get the KO next turn with something like a... Actually, to be honest, if he can draw into a goal bat, he can then KO the Trevenant, and that would be pretty huge. But it's somewhat of a moot point because it looks like another Trevenant is incoming. I can only imagine, unless he's getting a Shaman to draw more cards. Oh, so we've already seen two. Or was that in the first game? We know he plays a couple of Super, but I can't remember if it's the last game or this game. Either way, he's gone to get a Phantom. And he's going to be able to get going with this. Now, the one huge advantage, and this is even better, because we know it's Trevenant Break, but it's Trevenant from X and Y that everyone's using in these decks. Well, actually, there's something more at play here, and that's Trevenant's uh, Phantom's Attack. Phantom's Attack for one colorless energy, which means if you... And he's Psychic type. So if you put a Dimension Valley in play for zero energy you get to instantly evolve that Phantom. So if you go second and start Phantom, you just get a turn one Trevenant basically guaranteed. Now what happened there was that Absol went down, and Absol's got a fun little ability that allows you to move damage counters around. So we use that ability to move damage counters onto the Zubat, and actually get the KO, which is a really nice little play here. Now Absol allows you to move three damage counters, from one bench Pokemon, excuse me, one of your opponent's Pokemon to another. They do not have to be benched. And this is really good in this Trevenant deck. Because Trevenant's attack does 60 to the active, 20 to each of two benched. And Trevenant Break's attack does 30 damage to everything. So there's going to be a whole bunch of damage populating your opponent's field. So you can use that to... You know, you put 30 damage on one, 30 damage on another. Oh, Absol goes down. Now you've got 60 damage on one, which is enough to KO something like a Zuba or, heaven forbid, a Gibble. So we see here that Dan is in complete and utter control. 
And it's difficult at this stage to see how Sheldon wins this game. We already know that Dan is one game to zero up. And it's looking pretty gosh darn likely that he's going to go two games to zero up. And as this is a best of three, ladies and gentlemen, that will be the game. So we see here Trevenant breaks attack. It just does 30 to everything. And two more and he wins the game. Two more and the Shaman and the Hall Lucha go down. And that is the end of the game. Now, does he... Okay, if Sheldon doesn't have an energy, dropping that Lucario is silly. Oh, okay, no, 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 it's not. It's not that silly. I do apologize. I was thinking of Trevenant Breaks Attack. No, no, it's still a bit silly. I, I, I still think it's a bit silly. And here's the reason why, ladies and gentlemen. It can be hit on the bench. Trevenant's attack hits the bench. Trevenant breaks attack hits the bench. You don't want to put down a Pokemon because it could potentially end up being hit. Now, to be fair to Sheldon, Dan would need a Trevenant and an Energy or a Dimension Valley and a Trevenant break in order to use Trevenant breaks attack. But it's possible. There's the Energy. If he's got a Trevenant and a Wally then he actually could go ahead and get attacking with Trevenant Break this very turn. So, yeah, it's possible. And I know it's probably not going to happen, but it remains possible. Now, the counter-argument to that is, if Sheldon doesn't put the Lucario down and he gets judged, then the Lucario is no longer in his hand. But I think that's less likely to happen. I think that's a risk worth taking. What you don't want to do here is allow your opponent to take some damage off of that Trevenant straight away. Especially in a situation where they're going to be hitting for weakness afterwards. Now, I haven't done so yet, so I should... Oh, and there goes a bursting... Oh, this is just cruel. He's getting the KO on the Crobat. Using the Wobbuffet, it's, it's hitting... He's on 90, so it's hitting for 100, putting him on 190 total. Soon as you get some damage around, that Wobbuffet becomes a brilliant attacker. So I do very much like Daniel's build of the deck here. I like the Absol, I like the Wobbuffet, I like the Bursting Balloon. I think it's a really quite funky build off the deck. Oh, okay. Heads on Super Scoop Up is good. It takes that Head Ringer off the Shaman, puts it into his hand, allows him to draw some stuff. And we've actually got a... Now, here's the thing. Sheldon cannot attack with Lucario this turn. Because if Sheldon attacks with Lucario, he takes six damage counters from Wobbuffet, from the Bursting Balloon. Although we know Sheldon plays Megaphone, he's just got to hit the Megaphone. And he takes six damage counters from that Bursting Balloon. Then the Trevenant comes up with either an energy, a third energy, or a Dimension Valley. Then just gets the KO on the Lucario and the game's over. So Sheldon cannot attack with Lucario here. He's got to hit a, um, a Startling Megaphone first. Although we do see a VS Seeker, so presumably that's going to be a Sycamore. Oh no, oh, oh, this is even better. Because Corinna can search that Startling Megaphone. I like this. Assuming, of course, that the Startling Megaphone is not prized and has not previously been discarded. Oh, this is a nice play from Sheldon. I don't think it's going to win the game at all. I, I really don't. I think Sheldon's lost. But I've lost. I really like that he's going for this. I think this is absolutely what needs to be done right now. This is a cool little play. And let's not forget that although Sheldon hit the heads on Super Scoop Up, he cannot draw more cards with the Shaman because the Wobbuffet's active. When I said he could draw with the Shaman, I of course mean when the Wobbuffet is no longer active. I don't mean this turn. I should have been clearer on that. So I should say a massive thank you to Mad for Miniatures and everyone involved, especially Vinnie Gardner, the proprietor of said establishment. As I've said in all of my videos on, from this particular tournament, Really lovely chat, really nice place. They made it very easy for us to record. They popped us in a little room at the back and they gave us, you know, they, they put more lights on to give us more light to record. And it, they really, I don't know, it sounds silly saying stuff like that, but they were incredibly accommodating and they made it as easy as they possibly could so that I could go and record some games and then commentate them and get them up for you lovely people to enjoy. So, no, really, really huge thank you to them. So, Sheldon is at least going to get a KO here. 
but I'm not sure entirely what it's going to do. I mean, it's going to get him a prize. That's one thing it's going to do. But he KOs a Wobbuffet. And then Dan needs either an Energy or a Dimension Valley. And he does 120 to the Lucario. So what's the end game here? I mean, that Lucario then will need to have any chance. It's doing 70, it's enough. It's doing 70, he's got 40 on, that adds up to 110, it is enough. To have any chance here. Sheldon is going to need a one-hit KO on that Trevenant. And even with another strong energy, he's only doing 100, not 160. Now, if Dan could get a Lysander here, he can win the game. Bringing up the Shaman and getting the KO with um the Trevenant's attack. Because Shaman's on 50, he's only got 60 HP left. And Trevenant does 60, there is a Dimension Valley. Or a double Absol drop would get the KO here. Now I know that's a lot to ask for. So what Dan needs to do here... No! Oh, I suppose he's, yeah, he's not terribly desperate to win this turn. I wanted to see him use the Ultra Ball, empty his hand, draw... Si oh, he's got it straight away. Oh, and a Lysander! <laughs> and that is game, ladies and gentlemen. Dan plays the Lysander, pulls up the Shaman, uses Trevenant's attack in order to do 60 damage to the Shaman, putting him on 110 in total and taking the KO. Um, he's got... Is that, I'm sure that's two prizes left. I'm sure he's got two prizes left. In which case, pull up the Shaman, kill him with fire and let's get out of here. He's got enough energy to do... Oh, there we go. Yeah, he's seen it. And he kills a shaman and wins. So thank you to Dan and to Sheldon for agreeing to be on stream. Thank you to everyone at Mad for Miniatures for allowing us to record. Hugely grateful to them. And thank you all to you for watching. Now, we're going to be back with a top four game. And I'm back in top four. My Garchomp deck is going to be playing against Night March to see if I can make the final of City Championships. In my previous two City Championships, I made top four. Am I going to get to top four? Well, I got to top four in this tournament. Am I going to get beyond? You'll find out in the next video. Make sure that you like. I mean, you've had more than enough time to click the like button. Just do it. Come on. I'll love you if you do. Make sure you comment. Hashtag Go Sheldon is kind of out of date now. But anything else you want to say about this game or these decks or anything like that, do let me know. Pop it down in the comments. And if you haven't subscribed, make sure you do. And if you have subscribed, find somebody to subscribe on your behalf. A friend, maybe, or a relative, or a stranger. I'm not terribly fussy. And, of course, look after yourselves till next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.